Meet Fetch. The trash can you didn't know you needed, until today. Let me take you back to the night this idea was born, because that night, something went horribly wrong. Fortunately, it didn't take long to identify the cause and realize what had happened. Because after putting out the fire, I noticed this message which was literally burnt into my workbench by the flames. And you'll understand that such a warning is impossible to ignore. So, after wiping the black soot off my bench, I started cleaning up. Tools with tools. Batteries with batteries. Electronics with electronics. And finally, the trash. Into. The trash can. And at this exact moment I wondered why everything around us is becoming smart and automated, yet the trash can remains as it has been for decades. And sure, there are trash cans whose lids open and close automatically. But if we can delegate vacuuming and mopping to robots, why can't we have a trash can that comes to you when you need it? Luckily, one of the advantages of being an engineer is that if something doesn't exist, you can design and build it yourself. S starting off this project, I outlined the key design requirements, acting as our guiding principles, and I believe everyone deserves a fetch in their home. So to ensure accessibility, the most crucial addition to the design requirements was, keep it simple. My initial focus was on giving fetch a face, because every robot needs a bit of personality, right? With that done, let's address his first requirement, responding to calls. To make this happen, I equipped Fetch's ears with microphones linked to the microcontroller. The strategic placement allows Fetch to pinpoint the direction of incoming calls, a feature I'll explain shortly. Additionally, I integrated high-power LEDs on top of his antennas for communication with his surroundings. And, a quick detail about powering the ear electronics, cables run from the ears to the microcontroller in Fetch self-driving base. This setup practically fuses the bin and the lid. To avoid the hassle of changing the bag with one hand while holding the lid with the other, I added a hinge, ensuring the lid easily opens and stays open, leaving both hands free. Moving on to the self-driving base for the trash can, for mobility, wheels and motors are essential. So, Fetch employs these continuous rotating servos paired with distinct looking wheels. Each wheel has flat sides on the rim to prevent slipping, a ridge in the middle fitting snugly into the tire to prevent sideways sliding, and 10 holes which will help Fetch return to his starting point after he collected the trash. More on these holes in a moment. Because another important design requirement is that Fetch automatically opens and closes its lid. And he does so with this servo, via a cable running through this tube. At the top, the cable is attached to the lid. But how exactly does this make Fetch collect trash you ask? Let me explain. When I call Fetch, the microphones in his ears detect the sound of my voice and send a signal to the microcontroller. And the louder the sound, the higher the signal value sent by the microphone. This way, Fetch is able to determine from which direction the sound comes. Because when called from the front, both ears hear the sound equally loudly. But if called from the left, the left microphone detects a louder sound than the right one. And vice versa, if called from the right, the right microphone will detect a louder sound than the left. To let you know he heard you, he flashes the LEDs in his antennas. After that, he heads in the direction from which he was called. But, how does he find you? This is where during the design phase, it almost became impossible to complete the design, and I had to invent something that didn't exist yet. At least, not in the simple way I needed. Because after Fetch hears your call and starts moving towards your voice, he needs to be able to detect where you are in the room. And this could be achieved by adding cameras and using object or face recognition for example. But wanting to keep things simple, this option didn't fit the design. And because there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of types of sensors available on the market. You would think there must be a simple, easy to use sensor that can detect if there are people in the room, and measure their distance to the sensor, so Fetch knows where to go. But strangely enough, that's not the case. There are plenty of sensors for measuring distances, like this commonly used ultrasonic sensor for example. 
And a passive infrared or peer sensor like this one is often used to measure the presence of people in a room. However, both of these sensors are each suited for one specific task and always have a wide detection angle, making them unsuitable for fetch. But then I thought, what if I narrow the detection angle of the peer sensor by placing a tube in front of it, effectively turning it into a sort of reversed laser beam to measure the exact direction, and then combine it with an ultrasonic sensor for measuring the distance. And after a successful test, this is precisely what I applied to fetch. But with just one focused peer sensor, every time this sensor does not detect you, fetch might end up spinning until he detects you again. To prevent this, I added two more sensors. This way Fetch knows when he is going too far and needs to turn back. So, now he is able to find out where you are in the room, and knows when to open the lid. The only thing left is for him to return to its home point after he collected the trash. And to automatically return to his starting point, he uses a form of position control. I added this infrared transmitter and receiver beside each wheel. So each time a hole in the rim passes between the sensors, the infrared light from the transmitter is able to reach the receiver, which then generates a signal that is sent to the microcontroller. This way, Fetch is able to count how many steps each will took to get to you. And so, after he collected your trash, he knows exactly how many steps he has to take to get back to his starting point. Oh, and if he is doing this? He is letting you know his battery is running low. But don't worry. It will stop as soon as the charger is plugged in. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this project. And also, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of the upcoming projects. And for everyone who wants to tinker with the design. All files are available for free via the link in the description. See you in the next video.